Welcome to Seed Savers Exchange and the historic apple collection we keep here. Um, this is a, a vast collection of apple varieties that are known to grow in the upper Midwest. And today we're going to teach you how to propagate them. Apples themselves don't self-pollinate, so in order to keep a variety pure, we need to do it by vegetative means. The best system for that seems to be to, to graft the tree. Now, there's two methods of grafting that are commonly used. One we call bench grafting. That's done in the late winter. And a lot of collectors and hobbyists do use that method. You have simply a, a rootstock that's out of ground and a cyan wood. They're all dormant. This is done in like February, March, April. And that you can, it's called bench grafting because you can simply sit at a bench and do it. It's a very useful method. I'm going to show you about bud grafting. This is done in the summertime with li live growing wood. And we'll have rootstocks that are already planted in the ground and growing. And we'll do do this method today because it's mid midsummer and the time is right. So with that, I'm going to start by showing you a tree with a graft, graft union on it. This tree is an anoka, and you see this swell at the base right here, a distinct swell. That's the bud, uh, the graft union. Now a tree this old, you can't tell if it was done by bench grafting or bud grafting. There's, there's literally no difference in the end result. Below that, I get a little root swell at the base, but that's not, that's different than this part. That's the graft union. That graft union must stay out of the ground. This is on a dwarfing rootstock, and if that, if the tree that's above the graft union contacts the soil, it'll grow its own root. It'll become a standard tree. So to have any usefulness out of the rootstock we choose, we've got to keep that graft union out of the ground. This one's even a little close to the soil for my liking. So when we make a graft, we want to use this year's growth. You can see here, this is a transition spot. This was last year's terminal bud right here. And so this growth to the left is new growth from this summer. This is two-year-old wood here. We want to take cyan wood off, the, off one year old, this current season's growth on this side. If, you, if it will help, uh, two-year-old wood often has buds that stand out from the stem like this. Whereas on one-year-old growth, this year's growth, they're, they're tight to the stem. So this stem grew this season. I'm going to take the leaves off so it doesn't dry out any more than it uh, would if we left them on. They, it, they would continually suck moisture out. And we get up here to the tip and I take that off. So in June every year, under the leaf, uh, under the leaf, petiole of the leaf, the little stem, there's a, a bud that forms for next year. That happens in June. And so now, by mid-August, that, that bud is, has gone from green to, to reddish brown and is mature and ready to be used as a, as a grafting bud. We're going to simply cut that bud off and insert it under the bark of a rootstock, wrap it up, and uh, it'll sit dormant until next spring when it will shoot and grow. All right, now we're going to actually make the graft. I take, this is a rootstock that was purchased from off-site but, and planted just this spring. Um, so it's established, it's growing. I'm going to clean up the base of it so there's no growth below where I make the graft. And it's sometimes called tea bedding because we make a T-shaped cut I go across the top and up from the bottom. This is a grafting knife that has this nice little ear on it. You could use 
your thumbnail or a toothpick, whatever. But I open that little pocket. Now I have my cyan wood. I've cut the leaves off. This is from this year's, this summer's growth. I cut under the bud and then over the top, just above it. Kind of push sideways and you get a slip of bark that's got this bud on it. Now I can slide that in this little pocket until the top of that bud chip is below this horizontal cut. Now we wrap it up. This is a grafting tape. We sometimes also use rubber bands. Uh, rubber bands are kind of old school, the grafting tape's kind of modern, but it's stretchy and kind of wax-based tape. So I get it started and then I can stretch it way out, make a pass, then I'm going to come up, I'm going to leave a little bitty window where the bud can peek out during the growing season. Okay. What, what I want to do is get the whole thing covered so that no air gets in there. What happens now is that callus tissue forms just like scar tissue. If you cut your finger, you're going to heal. So does the tree bark. It grows callus tissue, fills this void in here around that bud, and the bud becomes part of this tree. And then it's this bud is going to sit on here dormant clear until next spring. At that time, I cut this tree off just above the bud. I keep all the excess shoots, unwanted shoots growing off the rootstock cleaned off and all my growth comes out that one bud. It's a very simple cut. Uh, it's quicker than doing a bench graft. Um, usually don't get quite as high a percentage with this grafting method, but um, you go a lot faster. So usually this is what's used in commercial production these days, but um, it's kind of whatever you prefer. Okay, let me do another one. The reason we're doing it this time of year in, in summer is that this is a time period when they say the bud the, or the bark slips. If I make a cut here at the end, I can peel that bark right off. Well, we use that uh, in order to take these buds off this stick in a clean fashion. So if I make a cut, I come from the bottom, I come under the bud, a rocking motion might help me there, and then make my top cut. That bark, if I kind of push sideways on it, that bark slips right off. And it's got the bud intact. Same thing happens on the rootstock. I like to make this cut six, maybe eight inches above the soil line. I open that little pocket up. I can put this bud in there. I'm making sure that the bud is directionally correct. The bud is pointing up. I can slide that in there. I got to slide it in until the, the top of the bud shield is below my horizontal cut. And now I can wrap this up with tape or rubber band. Again, I'm leaving a little window for the bud to breathe. Um, and this is going to stay in there all summer and into next spring before it shoots. Well, this is a tree that was grafted last summer with budding. So you can see the graft union right here. The bud that was inserted in the bark has grown. 
It's now about a three foot tall tree in midsummer. Um, I've taped it up. That's just a cosmetic thing so that the tree is straighter. Uh, not absolutely necessary, but it is important once that bud starts to grow in the spring to go through and take off excess growth that's coming off the, the rootstock. So I'm just with my thumb and forefinger, I'm taking off anything that's growing off the rootstock and pushing all the growth that this tree has to give out that one bud. And by doing that, we'll get a nice sturdy tree in one growing season. Thank you for tuning in to our little bud grafting demonstration from here at Seed Savers Exchange. With any luck at all and a little practice, you can be growing your own fruit trees. It's a really gratifying proposition.